am Sandy Almack, and I'm here to answer the question, how to choose a journaling Bible. It's a very, very personal question, and I have a couple of suggestions for things you may want to consider when you're making the purchase. One might be outer aesthetics, what it looks like on the outside of the Bible, because for some people that's very important. There are some that are a plain black, just a very standard, normal black Bible. Some will have engravings in them, some you can get your name put on them. There's lots of different things you can do with those. There's ones that have beautiful patterns on them, from flowers to birds to textures and all kinds of fun things. This one is hardcover. Lots are hardcover, lots are softcover, doesn't matter for Bible journaling. This one has like a canvas fabric type of texture on it. And since I've used this Bible while doing art, I've gotten the cover dirty. So at some point I'm going to do a video on altering this cover to kind of cover up the fact that I've made a mess of it. This one has pre-printed designs on the front and you can get ones like this, all different kinds of beautiful designs. And this one is a soft cover one. This one also comes in a hard cover. And this is the Bible that I use the most given that I take this to church with me, I take it to Bible study. And I got this one because I like the fact that it flips over and protects the Bible inside. So when I'm going a lot of places with it, I thought that would be kind of important. Not all of these Bibles are always going to be available. So if you're looking for these exact ones, I may or may not be able to give you a link to them. I'm going to put a bunch of links in the description down below, but I encourage you to go do your own research to try to find one that's suitable for you. Size and dimensions are something you can get on most websites. They'll tell you the height, width, and depth of it. So some are going to be thicker, some are going to be thinner, some are going to have larger or smaller type. And the one on the right you can see is much larger than that little one on the left, which is a new one to me. So I will be checking that out in future videos and we'll try it out. Uh, the one on the left has two columns, which you'll see in a few minutes, and the one on the right has one column for text. And you can see the difference in the actual thickness of a lot of the Bibles. The two on the bottom are interleaved, which I will be talking about in a few minutes as well. Next up is the format inside. Most journaling Bibles have a two inch or two and a quarter inch column. Usually the lines in them are two inches long or two inches wide and then there's a little space on either side and that's a very standard width. So if you get stamps or something, they, they generally are two inches so they fit there. I like these the most, the ones with columns, because I can join them up with the words that I have that I'm, I'm using for the scripture. This one is that thin, smaller Bible that has two columns. If you find that's easier to read, then that might be a really good choice for you, rather than having one column. It still has the outside two-inch columns in both of them, and you can see the paper slightly different colors in different ones. Most of the ones I have are cream. There's are, there are some that are white, and if that's important to you, you can look at that. This is called interleaved, and this is that canvas hardback covered book that I showed you earlier, and every other page is blank. And I just bought another one in a soft cover, and again, every other page is blank. And if you have big ideas and you don't want to color on the words, this might be a good option. I tend not to use this one as much because I feel like I need a bigger idea to justify a giant piece of paper. It, it feels like a very large canvas for me. And then there's the Inspire Bibles, or there's lots of other versions of them as well, and they have pre-printed art in them. And there's about 500 scriptures that are already drawn out, so you can just color them. I recommend you study the scriptures, not just use it as a coloring book. But they also have lots of pages, of course, that are empty as well. And you can do your own art and your own journaling that way. But know that sometimes their verse that they pick on that page is different than a verse that you want to journal on that page. So you may have to come up with other options because here the space is already taken by whatever verse the Bible company decided to put in there. For art considerations, does the paper work with different mediums? And I have enough Bibles, I think I have 16 of them now, and they all work fine with the mediums that I use. So the stuff you're going to see on this YouTube channel is going to work with just about every journaling Bible out there. And these are both colored pencil, the ones that I've showed you in this Inspire Bible. Sometimes I do the background, sometimes I just color the art. This is the interleaved Bible. The text is on the left and the blank page was on the right. 
and I just wanted to do a big splash of color. I did this with acrylic and on a few of these I'll show you that it doesn't bleed through and for those who are concerned about bleed through I'm not going to show you mediums that are going to make a mess but you have to test them out on your own Bibles as well. The only Bibles that my techniques won't work on are those dollar store Bibles because they're printed on newsprint. But anything printed on Bible paper is going to be just fine with a lot of different mediums. So this is watercolor pencil and I did this with many layers of watercolor pencil so I could get that richness of color built up. And this one is watercolor and I drew the, the boots in a uh, waterproof pen, a micron pen. This one is colored pencil and I did the coloring right on top of the words and I can still read them just fine. You may not be able to read them as well here on video screen just because that's the way you're looking at it but if you have the Bible in front of you these work just fine. Same with this one I have the whale's tail painted right over top of the words but I can still read them and for me that's another important consideration for me art wise is to be able to still read the words that are on the page. But of course I have 16 Bibles I can read it in so if I can't read something it's no great crime. Here's another one that's done in watercolor pencil with multiple layers to get that intensity. And then I did the outlining in black pencil on top after I finished all of the coloring. And here's another one done in watercolor. And I watercolored the ring and then I did the outlining in a black pen when I finished with the painting. Now the translation is for me the most important decision that you would need to make and it's not a decision I can make for you. Some people love a particular translation. Sometimes your church or your Bible study uses a particular translation and that is your choice entirely. Many of the Bibles that are out there are the ESV. Um, I have several of them that are ESV. This one's an NLT. The, my preference is an NIV but that's just me. That's just what I like. That's not even what my pastor uses to preach from, but I like that translation. And that's entirely up to you. If you're Catholic, you're going to want to get a version that has the Apocrypha in it. And when you first get your Bible, if you're scared, go to this page and do this one, the opening page, the first one that's on Bible paper, and do something on it. I just did hearts, but you want to do something so that you can baptize your Bible without feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm going to mess something up. In the description below, I've put a bunch of links to different places you might go and look for Bibles online, and I hope you find the one that suits you perfectly. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends, and I will see you next time. God bless you.